Good afternoon students and welcome to our ICT 9 second quarter week 5 part 1 discussion. This is Aljay Buhian, your ICT 9 subject teacher. Okay, so for the first part, we will be discussing about system specification. So purchasing software or hardware for your computer, you need to make sure your computer supports the system requirements and these are the necessary specifications your computer must have in order to use the software or hardware. So like for example, a computer game may require your computer to have Windows XP or later, a 2.0 GHz processor, 512 MB of RAM, a 64 MB graphics card, and 500 MB or hard drive space. So it is just as important to check system requirements for hardware devices. For example, if you buy a printer, it may require either Windows XP or Mac OS X 10.3 or later. It may also require a USB port and ATMB of available hard drive space. So if your computer does not have any USB ports, you will not be able to physically connect the printer. So. If your machine does not have uh, Windows XP or Mac OS X 10.3 or later, the printer drivers may be incompatible with your operating system. So this means your computer will be unable to recognize the printer. So most hardware and software products have the same requirements and printed on the side or bottom of the product packaging. So when you are shopping for computer software or hardware, it is a good idea to first find out exactly what your system's specifications are and write them down on a piece of paper. So the important information to record includes operating system, processor speed, memory, graphics cards, hard disk space, and input-output ports. So these are the things that you need to uh, importantly uh, record for your information in uh, purchasing or um, shopping for a computer software or hardware. So performance of a computer depends on four factors. So these are the speed and architecture of its processor or central processing unit, which is the brain of our computer then how much random access memory it has so uh, it has to be uh, at least 500 or maybe above that then another it's graphic systems so uh, whether it supports a great um, great visual effects on your computer and then its internal hard drive and capacity so the hard drive Okay, next, uh, let's talk about the process processor speed and architecture. So the speed of a computer's processor chip, or technically known as its clock speed, in measured in gig gigahertz, with the fastest modern processors currently running at up to 4.7 gigahertz. So however, for most computing tasks, including web browsing, sending emails, word processing and spreadsheet work, and any processor running at 1 gigahertz or more which remains perfectly sufficient so for application applications such as video editing 3d graphics work and for the majority of the power users playing computer games higher processor speeds are hardly required so if you want to have a computer gaming system you need to have this um, video editing, 3D graphics work, and majority of the power users. So CPU performance is now determined by far more than raw speed alone. So Intel made this very clear when it introduced its system of processor numbers. These provide an indication of pro processor's architecture, cache, and frontside bus or FSB speed in addition to its clock speed. 
So the architecture of a processor is the most important factor that to determine its performance and refers to its basic design and com complexity. Some processors are simply more sophisticated than the others. So with Intel, for example, producing basic processors called Celerons and Pinchums, as well as more power powerful processors. So the front side bus speed is a measure of how fast a microprocessor communicates with the computer's main circuit board or motherboard into which it is physically connected. Again, the higher the measure, the better for all performance, with FSB speed currently ranging from 533 MHz is still perfectly sufficient for the vast majority of applications, up to 1600 MHz. Okay, now let's talk about the RAM. To a large extent, the more RAM a computer has, the faster and more effectively it will operate. So computers with little RAM have to keep moving data to and from their disks or hard disk in order to keep running. So this tends to make them not just low in general but more annoyingly intermittently sluggish. So the RAM is measured in megabytes or MB and gigabytes for gigab GB as detailed on the storage page. Just how much RAM a computer needs depends on the software, so it is required to run effectively. So a computer running Windows XP will usually function quite happily with 1 GB of RAM, whereas twice this amount, example 2 GB, is the realistic minimum for computers running Windows 7. Next is the graphics system. So a computer's graphic system determines how well it can work with visual output. Graphic system can either be integrated into a computer's motherboard or plug into the motherboard as a separate video card. So graphic system integrated into the motherboard also known as onboard graphics are now quite powerful and sufficient for handling the requirements of most software applications aside from games, playing, 3D modeling and some forms of video editing. So any form of modern computer graphics system can now display high resolution color images on a standard size display screen. For example, any monitor up to about 19 in size, the more sophisticated graphics card now determine how well a computer can handle the playback of high definition video, as well as the speed and quality at which 3D scenes can be rendered. So another key feature of separate graphics card is the most of them now allow more than one display screen to be connected to a computer. So others also permit the recording video. So as a basic rule, unless a computer is going to be used to handle 3D graphics or to undertake a significant volume of video editing or recording, today there is a little point in opting for anything other than onboard graphics, not least because separate cards consume quite a lot of electricity and create quite a lot of heat and noise. So adding a new graphics card to a computer with onboard graphics is also a very easy upgrade if required in the future. So that is the use of our graphic systems on or to upgrade our computer's uh, resolution. Then lastly, we have the hard drive speed and capacity. Today, 40 GB is an absolute minimum hard drive size for a new computer running Windows 7, with a far larger capacity being recommended in any situation where more than office software is going to be installed. So where our computer will frequently be used to edit video, a second internal hard disk dedicated only to video storage is highly recommended for stable operation. So indeed, for professional video editing using a program like Premiere Pro CS5, Adobe now recommends that a PC has at least three internal hard disks. 
So one for the operating system and programs. One for video project files and one for video media. So the two key factors determine the speed of traditional spinning hard disks. So the first is the rotational velocity of the physical disk itself. So this can currently be uh, around 4,200, 5,400, 7,200, and 10,000 or 15,000 RPM or revolutions per minute. So the faster the disk spins, the quicker data can be read from or written to it. So hence the faster the disk, the better. Although faster disk consumer more power or it consumes more power than the uh, uh, low, uh, I mean the slower disk then it makes more noise and generate more heat so most of the sub hard disks run at either 5400 or 7200 7, rpm at least so well most laptop hard disk runs at 4200 or 5400 and then the second key factor that determines performance of a traditional internal hard disk is the interface used to connect it into the computer's motherboard so the three types of interfaces exist uh, these are the serial advanced technology attachment or SATA which is the most modern and now pretty much the norm on new PCs then Next is the Integrated Device Electronics or IDE or also known as UDMA which is a slower and older form of interface and finally the SCSI which happens to be the oldest but in it most modern variant is still the fastest disk interface standard. So that that is all for this uh, week's part 1 discussion. Thank you for listening and may God bless you on your activity. So if ever you have any questions, just feel free to ask me uh, via uh, messenger or you may call me. So and then if you want to view this uh, discussion again, you may access it on our uh, learning content management system or at lcms.guidef.com. Thank you again. This is Aljay Buhian signing off.